The dictionary definition of a weed, a plant considered undesirable, unattractive, or troublesome, especially one growing where it is not wanted. They insult us by their very existence. They bring out the killer instinct in us. We wage chemical warfare against them, and they win. This story is about the survival of the fittest. And who might that be? No doubt about it, weeds. This is an absolute enemy of the state. There's no question whatsoever. The name of this menace? Palmer amaranth, a.k.a. pigweed. An ordinary, manageable nuisance until recently. Now, a frankenweed. Some of them are five to six foot tall, and it's only about 70 days old. If you look closely inside, you may or may not be able to see it, but if you look closely inside, here's our cotton crop. It's completely overwhelmed. Its march across the South has devastated cotton and soybean crops. If you're off a week, this plant will beat you. If you go to the beach and you shouldn't have, this plant will beat you. So it is war, and it's war of survival because this, this plant will put us out of business. Stanley Culpepper is a weed scientist with the University of Georgia. His students call him Dr. Pigweed. Now you see my stake? That was at the top of that plant four days ago. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's at least eight inches in four days. What it looked like on July 10th and now. This relentless killer of crops was discovered eight years ago, right here on this farm in Macon County, Georgia. In 2012, we've confirmed it uh, in 76 Georgia counties. So we went from 500 acres to well over 2 million acres. How did it happen? One kills weeds to the root. Ever hear of Roundup? Yep, that stuff that's advertised on TV. No root, no weed, no problem. Roundup, the commercial name for an herbicide called glyphosate, was marketed to farmers as a miracle weed killer. Monsanto, its manufacturer, genetically engineered cotton and soybean seeds, so they were Roundup resistant. Roundup used to be just a cure-off for everything. Harold Johnson farms a thousand acres in Macon and nearby Dooley counties. All he had to do was spray on Roundup. His Roundup-resistant crops lived. The pigweed died until it didn't. It's all of a sudden, they, they would lay down and then they'd stand it back up. And then it got to the point where they wouldn't even lay down. The pigweed had genetically engineered itself and become Roundup-resistant too. Now here's the terrifying part. This plant's gonna produce an excess of 500,000 seed. One plant? One female plant, and if it survives, it produces a half a million seed. Desperate growers have deployed their own army against their enemy, like foot soldiers from another century, to hand weed huge fields. And Dr. Pigweed has a warning. This plant has absolutely adapted to everything that we have done so far. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. New York City hopes Larry Sahanik's goats will have better luck against another weed gone wild, an invasive variety of a reed called Phragmites, plaguing Fresh Kills Park, an enormous former landfill on Staten Island the city is restoring. The experiment? To see if the goats will eat their way through two acres of the stuff. The goat eats about 20% of his body weight a day in uh, so leaves. So that's what? If so it was... that's a 65-70 that's a pound goat, so that goat's going to eat 15-20 pounds of, of food a day. We have 20 goats. The objective was to do it in six weeks, and they'll certainly do it in six weeks. It turns out they love Frank Mighties. Six weeks later, success. You hold that. I've just... how oh, this thing actually grows. Wow. That is one long line. Now, kudzu was actually brought here deliberately. It was touted, sad to say, by uh, USDA about 100 years ago as being the next miracle plant. And it was brought over from Asia, planted along the embankments of railroad uh, trellises. Louis Ziska is a weed scientist with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And somewhere along the way, in the post-World War II era, it kind of got out of hand. Boy, did it. It's about 8 million acres of it now in the United States. Yep. Really? Yep. 
There's so much of it. Scientists are trying to turn it into a biofuel. Really. But kudzu is not just a bad joke, the weed that ate the South. Kudzu is something a lot scarier. Now, 50 years ago, you would be hard-pressed to find kudzu north of the Potomac. Today, it's pretty much everywhere north of the Potomac. And two years ago, they found it for the first time in Canada, in southern Ontario. Kudzu has become a map of climate change. One of the things that keeps a lot of these invasive species at check, and kudzu included, has been really cold winters. As the winters have warmed, what's happened is that slowly kudzu is migrating northward. Kudzu does not have a political stake in climate change. It's simply responding to the change in temperature that's already occurring. So, can anything be learned from yeah. weeds? Between the sidewalk and the asphalt, it's able not only to grow, but to thrive. Louis Ziska takes us to the weedy parking lot behind his office. There's seven billion of us on the globe right now. We're gonna to have to feed those people. How do we do that with less water, less soil, less fertilizer, and a climate on steroids? And yet here you have this plant that's able to grow up through the asphalt. So yeah, we can learn a whole lot from how this plant functions, how it does, and take those lessons and apply them to cultivated plants as a means to adapt. Yeah, this is like a little buffet of, wild, of, of weeds. Tama Matsuoka Wong knows she can't beat weeds, so she eats them. This is lamb's quarters. <laughs> is this something that farmers will really work hard to get rid of? Yes, but it's very nutritious, and it, as long as you're picking it the right way and cooking it. Matsuoka is a lawyer turned weed forager. And this is a creeping jenny on the ground here. Yes, this light yellow. Green. She supplies edible weeds to a couple of the fanciest restaurants on the East Coast. This is a weed that I think almost anyone can find. When it's small, it's onion grass. But what happens is they get these aerial bulbettes. It's like we're using this. Hmm. See how it's juicy? It's juicy, it's garlicky, but delicate. Yes! I think of it as my dry meadow. The backyard of her rural New Jersey home is a weed meadow. The lavender bergamo is flowering. Matsuoka's message that one person's weeds are another's lunch. And they can be delicious. This is one of our big discoveries. Using recipes from her just published weed cookbook, she and her daughter showed us with a few of the weeds we picked. Creeping Jenny tomato and mozzarella salad. Curried lamb and lamb's quarters meatballs. And amaranth, onion, and feta phyllo triangles. No, not Palmer amaranth, our old friend pigweed, a relative. But I would love to get some, you know, clean Palmer's amaranth and try and see if it tastes the same as this one. Really? So maybe it, it could be transformed from enemy into friend? Possibly. And I know where she can find a lot of it.